Greetings once again. This is the Pencrest AP Physics 1 video series. This is video 1B. It's a qualitative graphical analysis of position versus time. Now, <clears throat> the first thing we're going to do here is look at various types of one dimensional motion and how each one would look graphically. There's seven different types of motion that an object can display in one dimension. We're going to assign a code to each one of these and you will need to know what each of the codes means. Okay, first we have uh, NM, which can stand for no motion or not moving. Pretty self-explanatory. We have plus CV, which is constant velocity to the right. We have minus CV, constant velocity to the left. We have plus plus A, which is moving to the right and speeding up. Plus minus A, moving to the right and slowing down. Minus plus A, moving to the left and speeding up. And minus minus A, which is moving to the left and slowing down. You'll notice that the first three codes are pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the others will require a little bit of clarification. Um, <clears throat> for the first three motions, uh, there's no acceleration because the velocity is not changing. Um, the last four, they all involve an acceleration, which is why there's an A in the code. Um, when you look at the last four in terms of nomenclature, the sign outside the parentheses indicates the direction of the motion. Plus means to the right, uh, minus means to the left. Uh, the sign inside the parentheses indicates if the magnitude of the velocity is either increasing if it's positive or decreasing if it's negative. Now, graphical interpretation of motion typically involves considering how the kinematics quantities change as time goes on for a particular type of motion. Initially, we're going to look at how a position changes over time. That is the focus of this video. Now, the generic position versus time graph looks like this image that you see down here. Looks something like a standard XY plane except uh, you'll notice that the time axis does not extend to the left of the zero point here. Uh, this is because we typically do not conceive of time uh, as being negative. Uh, also for the time being you won't see a scale on the axes. Uh, we're looking at this uh, from a qualitative standpoint, not a quantitative standpoint just yet. Notice that the independent variable time is on the horizontal axis and the dependent variable position or x is on the vertical axis. Um, we say that the dependent variable here, position, depends on time. So that's the reason for that nomenclature. Now it's important to realize what this graph, uh, what the origin of this graph represents. We would say that at this point here, the position and the time are both zero. Um, <coughs> Maybe difficult to think of time as being zero, but this is simply when we become interested in what the object is doing. At t equals zero, that's when we begin paying attention. Before that, we're not interested or we don't care. As far as the position goes, the x equals zero point is the physical origin. And again, this is the uh, point at which x equals zero, and that's how we refer to uh, all other positions. Um, we would say that if a position versus time graph is in the top half, that is up here, we would conclude that the position is positive and therefore to the right of the origin. If the graph appears below the time axis down here, we would conclude that the position is negative or to the left of the origin. Okay, first we're going to look at no motion or NM. Uh, if an object is not moving, uh, the position stays the same. So think about what that would look like on the graph because time still goes on but the position doesn't change. So we get something that looks like this. Where is this object located? We don't have a scale so we can't be very specific about how far away it is but what do we know? 
based on the qualitative characteristics of this graph, we can tell because the x value is above the time axis, we can tell that the object is located to the right of the origin. Now, qualitatively, this is a horizontal straight line above the time axis that indicates an object that's not moving on the right of the origin. Okay, now, what do you suppose the graph would look like if the object were located to the left of the origin? Makes sense? So you have a straight horizontal line below the time axis indicating a negative position. Now, constant velocity to the right plus CV. This means that the position is changing at the same rate at all times. We can say that the object starts at the origin at t equals zero. Uh, after one second of time, we can say it's maybe a meter away. After two seconds, maybe it's two meters away, and so on. You can see the pattern. If you could plot these points on the graph, what would they look like? Right? Notice that the graph is a straight line that goes up and to the right. Again, we don't have a scale, so we can't do any quantitative analysis. But for now, the qualitative characteristics are, is what matters. Um, <clears throat> if we were to divide the time axis into equal increments here, we would see that the position changes by the same amount in each increment. Okay, we're going to see later that the slope is related to how fast it's moving or the magnitude of the velocity. Uh, we don't have a scale, so we can't figure it out just yet. Okay, now what's different about this graph? Qualitatively, it's the same kind of graph. But what's different about it? Okay, the only difference is where the object was when it started. At t equals zero, which is here, the object was located to the left of the origin. Okay, it still moves up and to the right with a straight line. So it's still moving to the right with a constant velocity, but it started in a different place. What happens to the object when the graph crosses the time axis here? This is when the object itself crosses the physical origin x equals zero. Now, constant velocity to the left, uh, you can probably see this coming. This type of motion is similar to positive CV except for the direction. This is graph is a straight line that goes down and to the right. Again, we see that the object would be displaced by the same amount in each equal time increment along here. In this case, the displacement is to the left because the graph goes down and to the right. This particular object starts at the origin. Again, how would the graph look different if the object were to start somewhere else? We would have a line going down and to the right from up here or from down here. Now, one convenient method for differentiating plus CV and minus CV is the slope of the straight line. If the slope is positive, so is the velocity. And if the slope is negative, so is the velocity. So plus CV up and to the right, minus CV down and to the right. Now, plus plus A, these are going to get a little harder. Plus plus A, as we know, means to the right and speeding up. Um, so try to picture in your head what's going on here. Uh, we'll put the object at the origin again at, at t equals zero. Uh, after one second, let's say it's uh, 20 centimeters to the right. After two seconds, it's 55 centimeters to the right. After three seconds, it's 130 centimeters to the right. So you can see what's going on. In each successive time interval, each successive second, the change in the position or the displacement is increasing, it's getting bigger. In order to cover larger displacements in each second, the object has to be moving faster. So it's got to be speeding up. So if you were to plot those points, what do you think the graph would look like? And there we go. Okay, this curve looks like a parabola. It curves up and to the right. We describe this curve as having positive curvature. Okay, that positive curvature is associated with the acceleration. You can see that the curve sort of has the characteristics of a bowl. 
this indicates positive acceleration. Anytime the position versus time graph moves up and to the right with positive curvature, it means the object is moving to the right and speeding up. Okay, again, we could generate graphs that where the object uh, does not start at the origin. Okay, again, both graphs still have positive curvature. They curve up and to the right. The only difference is where the object starts. In this case, it started to the right of the origin. In this case, it started to the left. Okay? Uh, also note that if you were to look at the, at the slope of the curve at any point, as you go left to right, the slope is positive and increasing. Okay, the slope again is associated with the velocity of the object, so if the slope is increasing, so is the velocity. Now, to the right and slowing down, plus minus a, based on the reasoning for plus plus a, we can conclude that if the object is slowing down, its displacement in each successive time interval would decrease. It would be getting smaller. So if it started at the origin, okay, again, as we go left to right, we can see that the displacement in each interval would be getting smaller and smaller. It's slowing down. Now, again, this curve looks like a parabola, but we describe this curve as having negative curvature. And again, that curvature is associated with the acceleration. So it has negative curvature shaped like a hill. And that negative curvature means negative acceleration. So anytime the position versus time graph moves up and to the right with negative curvature, it means the object is moving to the right and slowing down. Okay, once again, we could have um, position versus time graphs where it doesn't start at the origin. Okay, again, we look at the negative curvature. Uh, note also that if you look at the slope, at any point as you go left to right, the slope is positive, but it's decreasing. And again, the slope is associated with the velocity. So if the slope is decreasing, so is the velocity. That means it's slowing down. Okay. Now, one method for differentiating these two motions, uh, plus minus a, implies that the object is slowing down. Notice that the plus minus a graph approaches here a straight horizontal line. We know that a straight horizontal line is a position graph for no motion. So if the object is slowing down, it's approaching no motion. It's approaching a straight horizontal line, so it must be slowing down. Now, minus plus a to the left and speeding up. Uh, the rationale, once again, is similar to plus plus a, but the object is moving to the left. So we know that the graph then uh, must go down and to the right. It's still speeding up, so it's got to cover more displacement in each successive time interval. Again, we'll start at the origin. It's moving left, down and to the right. Okay? This is our minus plus a graph. Again, it's a parabola that curves down and to the right. Again, it has negative curvature like a hill, so it has a negative acceleration. Anytime the position versus time graph moves down and to the right, with negative curvature, it means the object is moving to the left and speeding up. Okay? Again, we could generate graphs where it does not start at the origin, starts to the left of the origin, starts to the right of the origin, but the qualitative characteristics of the graph are the same. Again, if you look at the slope of the curve at any point, as you go left to right, the slope is negative and its magnitude is increasing. So it's a negative, a bigger negative number as you go left to right. So the slope is associated with the velocity, the, the number is increasing, the um, magnitude of the velocity is increasing, so it's speeding up and moving to the left. Okay, notice um, also that the, the minus plus a graph looks like the plus plus a graph, but it's been flipped around the time axis. So imagine taking this graph and flipping it over. Now, last one and the hardest one, minus minus a, 
to the left and slowing down. Uh, the rationale is similar, but the object is moving to the left, so the graph goes down and to the right. Uh, it's also got to approach a straight horizontal line, like plus minus A did, but instead of going up and to the right, it goes down and to the right. So what do you think it would look like? There we go. Again, it's another parabola. It goes down and to the right, but now it has positive curvature, like it's a bowl again, right? So a position versus time graph moves down and to the right with positive curvature, like a bowl, means the object is moving left and slowing down. Okay, again, we could generate graphs where it doesn't start at the origin. We're uh, familiar with that. Both graphs still have positive curvature down and to the right. The only difference is where it started. Okay, if you look at the slope of the curve at any point, as you go left to right, the slope is negative and decreasing in, in magnitude. So the slope, again, is associated with the velocity. The slope is decreasing. In, um, the number is decreasing. So is the velocity. Now, you can try to memorize all of these graphs. But it's better to use logic and reason to think about what the object is doing and what it would look like on a position versus time graph. Ultimately, you're going to want to associate the graph with both the code and a verbal description of the motion. So here's our summary. All right, for position versus time, no motion, horizontal straight line, could be here, could be here, just indicates where the object is when it's standing still, right? Plus CV, straight line up and to the right, minus CV, straight line down and to the right. Let me get to the four accelerated motions, the four curving graphs, plus plus A, to the right and up, positive curvature, plus minus A, to the right and up, with negative curvature, minus plus A, to the right and down, with negative curvature, minus minus a to the right and down with positive curvature. Okay, that's going to wrap this one up. So that is all. I'll see you again next time.